Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tankers of all ages, Sir Harry here again with another user-friendly video, the series where I feature a mid-tier tank that's relatively easy for new or less experienced players to play and is on a tech tree line that goes somewhere you want to go. And yeah, there it is. I've had requests for the American M4 Sherman, and it's about time we do a review of this tank because you know what? This is such a great all-round medium tank. It's not exceptional at anything, with a few small exceptions we'll talk about in a moment, but it does everything reasonably well. Other medium tanks at this tier are great at firepower, great at mobility, great at armor, but this one has just enough of everything to make it a great all-rounder and a tank that's definitely worth playing. And you know what? Even after you move way beyond this up to Tech Tree, it's a lot of fun to keep and, and we'll see some examples of why when we get to the replays a little later. Moving to the tech tree, you can see that there are actually two lines on the American tech tree that have medium tanks on them. This is the only true medium line. The other one, which goes through the Stuart light tanks through the M7, and then back to some mediums and lights with the T71, and eventually to the T57 heavy, isn't a true medium line. This one is. Starting at tier 2, you've got the T2 medium. Fun little tier 2 tank, nothing exceptional about it. The M2 medium at tier 3, however, can mount a howitzer. And at tier 3, you can drive around and obliterate low tier enemies. For those of you that saw my M3 Lee Unlovables video, you'll know that it's uh, it's a capable tank. It definitely has some drawbacks, but it's got a really, really fast-firing 75mm gun that does a reasonable amount of alpha damage at Tier 4, and if you play it like a tank destroyer, you can have success in the M3 Lee. But I know it's one of those tanks that a lot of people love to hate. But, you know, it, it's playable, and uh, it, it makes getting up to the M4 okay. You'll see that this, the line then splits to the M4 or the T1 Heavy. Uh, if you watch my T1 Heavy user-friendly review, you know you don't have to play the T1 and the M6 to get to the T29. You can go to the M4, though, and then up to the M4A3E8, uh, the EZ8, which has a pretty quick firing gun, decent mobility, but the alpha is really, really low for Tier 6, and you'll find you start to struggle a bit doing damage to Tier 8 tanks when you get into those battles. Moving up the tech tree now from the EZ8, we go to the T20, and it's a Tier 7 medium tank, and yet it's not a strong tier for mediums. There's a lot of lemons at that tier. It's okay. It does everything okay. Uh, you know, it's like the M4 Sherman. Uh, it doesn't accept at anything but it's playable and, and you can have some fun in it and then really a tier eights where the american medium line really starts to take off with the pershing uh, very very good turret armor great gun depression decent mobility and a decent amount of alpha damage and you can have some amazing battles in that uh, tier eight medium tank Pershing's great. The M46 Patton at Tier 9 uh, is really a lot of fun. It, it's not as strong as, say, a T54, but again, it's a good all-round tank. And then you get to Tier 10. I just unlocked the M48 Patton last week, and holy cow, that thing is unbelievable. I think I'm a convert. I think I'm going to upset some Object 140 and T62A drivers, but I think this is my favorite Tier 10 medium tank. It does everything really well, doesn't really have a lot of uh, weaknesses, and, and it's just a heck of a lot of fun. So back to the M4 Sherman. We'll start by talking about mobility. It's not exceptional, but it's okay. It does 48 kilometers an hour forward, which is kind of middle of the pack for its tier 5 medium uh, compatriots, and it does 18 in reverse. Again, that's okay. So you can play ridge lines. You can get where you need to go. You can pop up and down. Uh, you can relocate on the battlefield reasonably well, but uh, yeah, it's not setting any speed records, and it is certainly not a Panzer III IV. Uh, it's only got a 15.4 horsepower per ton specific power, and, and that's pretty terrible when you compare it to the other tier 5 mediums. Uh, it, you know, it does take a bit of time to get up to speed, but it's got enough oomph. Again, you can pop up and down hills, and, and, and you can move around where you need to go. The train resistances aren't terrible, but uh, they're not as strong as some of the other tier 5 mediums. And in terms of uh, traverse, it's got a 38 degree per second turret traverse, which is not great, and a 37 degree per second hull traverse, which is all right. So 75 degrees per second is your combined turret and hull traverse, so you can defend yourself if you get surrounded by little light tanks and they're circle strafing you. You have a chance anyway of getting around and, and trying to get a shot into them, and, and we'll see a bit of that, I think, in one of the replays coming up. Uh, view range, this is one of the real strengths of this tank. Once you mount the second and turret you have 370 meters of view range that is exceptional for a tier 5 medium tank top that up with coated optics you're seeing almost out to 445 meters the max view range and you'll find in this tank actually that you're so much better than a lot of other tanks at the tier you'll get a lot of spotting damage without actually even realizing you're doing it because your view range is just so much better than everything else at the tier looking at the uh, research and the uh, the modules you can unlock here unfortunately you're going to have to research the tracks pretty early because 
because you can't mount much of anything on this thing until you've got those upgraded tracks. You'll see there's three engines. You really want the top one, again, because that low specific power uh, requires a bit of a horsepower boost. And you can see the, uh, the second turret, you can unlock once you get the tracks, extend that view range out, get lots of spotting damage, and that'll allow you to unlock the 76 millimeter gun. That's a great gun, uh, but you can unlock the 105 millimeter howitzer without it. And we're going to talk about the 105 uh, in some detail and see a replay. So the 105, of course, does have some of the limitations of a derp gun. It's got a slow rate of fire, 6.67 rounds per minute, and with high explosive, it only has 53 millimeters of penetration. So you're going to struggle, even with some medium tanks at this tier, you're going to have trouble penning the front, say, of a Panzer IV, uh, a T-34 with its sloped armor. You'll do damage, but but you're not going to pen and, and do the max damage, which for this is 410 uh, points of damage. That, that's a significant amount. You can one-shot a lot of tanks, some Tier four tanks, and certainly a Tier three and four. you're going to one-shot a lot of stuff if you can penetrate it. it it does have a heat round with 101 millimeters of penetration, but it's heat, so it's not going to penetrate tracks. It's not going to penetrate really sloped armor like the side of a, you know, front of a Hetzer, let's say, or the front of a T-34. Uh, so you have to really pick when you fire heat and, and pick flat surfaces that are square onto you. Uh, and certainly, again, the sides and rear, if they have more than 53 millimeters of armor, you're going to want to fire heat. And you do 350 average damage there, so a bit less than the HE. The 76 has a much faster rate of fire, 12.5 rounds per minute, 128 pens not bad and 177 if you fire the premium rounds both of those do 105 damage i carry some high explosive rounds with my 76 because again if, if i do get into a tier 5 battle and there's low tier tanks running around okay it's not the derp i may not one shot them but i can still do a relatively good amount of damage with he the accuracy of the 105 is significantly worse as you would expect at 0.55 dispersion uh, the 76 is still not great at 0.43 uh, and they both have decent aim times though 2.5 seconds for the 105 and 2.3 seconds for the 76. Not terrible. You may want to consider mounting a gun lane drive if you have a spare equipment slot. It certainly wouldn't be a bad idea with the 105. And when I said the M4 was kind of average all round and it didn't excel at too much, one thing it does excel at is gun depression. 12 degrees is amongst the best in the game. It allows you to work ridge lines really well and hide your hull armor. And believe me, you want to hide your hull armor. The lower glacis is only 50 millimeters effective. The upper 73. Uh, it's 50 with a bit of angling. Uh, 88 on the gun mantlet isn't terrible and the cheeks on the turret are pretty good because they round around to the sides there and they provide some angling. Now if we go into kind of a hull down mode here as if we were working a ridge line, you can see that that upper glacis becomes about 81. Still not enough that you want to be able to depend on it, but if you do overexpose a little bit, you might have a chance to bounce something. But you know what? Just expose your turret and be safe. Even angling this tank to the side there, you can see the effective armor doesn't get that much of a boost. 70 on the upper hull, 91 on the gun mantlet, 75 on the side of the turret, and only 62 on the side of the hull. Now the tracks are huge. They will eat shots. They act as spaced armor, effective about 100 millimeters. So when we think of the M4 and you've upgraded everything and you've got this amazing turret with 370 meters of view range, the armor on the front's not great, and if you're going to play ridgelines and you want to use the derp, you know, you've only got 88 or so, 80 to 90 on the gun mantlet, 100 or so on the cheeks isn't bad, but maybe we could make it a little bit better. And if you're, again, if you're going to play the derp and you don't want the 76, how about the base turret, the stock turret? Because you know what? The armor on that is actually a lot better. Now, the downside is that the view range goes from 370 down to 330. You're going to want to mount binos to try to boost that view range uh, up to something that's a little more usable. And look at that, the gun mantlet, 200 millimeters of effective armor because of all the spaced armor around it. That is pretty incredible. 89 on the sides there is not too bad. The cheeks, the lower part of the cheeks are not quite as strong. Uh, they're only 73, but they're a relatively small target. And if you keep moving up and down, you know, on a, on a behind a ridge line or something, you can make them work. 122, wow, on the cheeks. So this is an option. If you want to take this out and just play the derp gun and put binos on it, then hey, you know what? You can have a lot of fun. You got better armor, but you do suffer a lot in terms of your view range. When you're moving, those binos are not active and you're not going to spot anywhere near as much as you will with the top turret and coated optics. We'll do a quick tank compare before we hop into the action, and you can see right away the damage per minute of just under 1500 is amongst the worst of any tier 5 medium tank. Only the T-34 equipped with the 76mm gun is worse. The M7, the German tanks, and even the Sherman 3, the British version of this tank, have better DPM. The penetration's good, tied with the Sherman 3 for best in class. The damage, same thing, tied with the Sherman 3 and the T-34 for best in class damage. But that rate of fire, 13 rounds per minute, really lets this down, and that's why that DPM is so low.
Carrying on with gun handling, 2.21 second aim time. It's kind of middle of the pack. It's tied with several other tanks there, you can see. Uh, it's not bad. It, it still feels like it takes a long time to aim, though. And, and so a gun lane drive, I think, is not a bad choice when you're considering what equipment to mount on this tank. Whether you're using the 76 or the 105, it could be a good choice to get that aim reticle down a little bit quicker. Accuracy of 0.41 once you're fully aimed is not great. Only the M7 is worse. Uh, the German tanks, of course, are quite a bit better. And so you do have to aim, wait for that aim reticle to come all the way down. Down if you're shooting from range. Uh, dispersion values on the move and when turning the hull and turret are worse than most of the other tanks in this class, but of course where the M4 wins out for weapons handling is that gun depression. 12 degrees blows everybody else out of the water. Uh, e even the 2 degrees more you have than the Panzer 4H and the Sherman 3 give you so much more flexibility working ridge lines and keeping that weak hull armor covered. Mobility, 48 kilometers an hour forward is, is pretty bad compared to its competition. The horsepower per ton of 15.42 is second worst in the class and you can definitely feel that when you're trying to get up to speed. Hull armor, yeah, pretty much worse than almost everything else except the T-34, but the T-34 has super sloped front hull armor, and so that does make up for the fact that it's only 45 millimeters. The M4 does have pretty good turret armor, though, best in class. Uh, and if you go back to that stock turret and you're willing to give up that view range, uh, you can actually boost that even more. 460 hit points isn't bad, but uh, it falls short of the German tank, uh, the Panzer IV-H, and even the Sherman III, the British one, has slightly more. So enough facts and figures, let's get out into the battle space. And uh, this is the battle where I've got the 105mm derp gun mounted, the howitzer, and we're in a tier 5 battle on Lakeville. So, you know what, if you're going to mount the derp, this is exactly the kind of battle you want. It's tier 5, there's tier 4 and tier 3 tanks running around. Uh, that you can penetrate pretty easily for the most part and and you can even penetrate some of the tier fives if you're willing to spam some heat so before the battle started i asked a light tank to come up and sp uh, spot on this middle road it's very important you get visibility forward early in the battle because all of your tanks down to the south there can get shots across the lake or onto the middle road and wipe out enemy tanks pretty early in the battle now we don't get a light tank to come up here so you know what i'm going to grab the bull by the horns i'm going to race up here try to get under cover and uh, oh, we got a Panzer 4A, I think it is, heading into town there. I'm not worried about him right now. I get behind cover and I spot an enemy Panzer 1C, and that's the other reason it's really important to have a presence on this road, because by being here, you can deny the enemy visibility on your tanks in the south. As they're driving from the spawn towards town, if they're too far north towards the, the uh, shore of the lake there, uh, they're going to get ripped apart if there's a spotter on the middle road and there are some enemy guns on the north side of the lake. So I shoot at the Panzer 1C, and I must have missed him, and, and I did some splash damage to him, but. I certainly didn't penetrate. 126 damage uh, was nothing close to what I would have done had I actually penetrated that tank. Panzer IV H driving towards town there, and, and no chance that shot's ever going to hit. You can see our disposition for the team. Our two heavies thankfully went city. Very important that heavy tanks go city on this map. Uh, the enemy sent both of their heavies, though, it looks like, down the valley. We had four TDs guarding that with artillery, and uh, the T-14 has amazing frontal armor, the Tier 5 American Premium Heavy Tank, uh, and so he could be a tough nut to crack. And the OI Experimental, if he's got the derp gun, of course, could uh, one-shot a lot of our TDs that were guarding the valley. So that enemy Panzer 4H, I did not expect him to drive out onto the uh, Lakeshore Road here. I do get a shot into the side of his turret, but he's got that spaced armor, and uh, so the high explosive round just did uh, kind of damage, splash damage. It didn't penetrate and I didn't do full damage, but he decides discretion is the better part of Valor. Our t 14s bearing down on him, and, and he pulls back and gets taken out. So I pull around to the enemy base, and oh, there's an artillery, and it's a seal clubbing, la fa 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 which, of course, uh, yeah, uh, needs to die really quickly. One shot, high explosive, he's dead. The T-40 comes around the corner, and uh, he's got pretty weak side armor there, and I managed to put a shot of high explosive into his side. So now the AT-2. I'm going to start trying to play the ridge here. The AT-2 gets a shot into me. I, I snap shot there. I'm not fully aimed, and, of course, it sails right over his head. And those two enemy heavies that were racing down the valley now are in our cap. Uh, all of our TDs that were down there are dead, except for the Electo. He had the uh, common sense to abandon the cap. He pulled east to where that Wolverine is. That's a great spot for TDs on this map because you can get shots up the middle road. And if the enemy decides to start to cap, it gives you the flexibility of turning to the west and getting shots in on the enemy. And right now, they're the only thing keeping us alive in this game. Uh, the enemy would have capped out. Uh, by now with uh, with a lot of tanks down there if those two TDs had not been there to keep putting damage into them and resetting the cap. If you watch my DW2 Unlovables video, I did talk about how important it is to react to enemy attempts to cap your base, how important it is to defend your cap. And, oh, there's the Panzer 1C, cute little guy. Yeah, 
all out in the open by himself. Uh, so if uh, if that Wolverine and the Electo had not uh, stayed where they were and focused on the cap, you know what? The game would be over by now. We would have lost. And uh, with that many enemies in the cap, it doesn't take them long to end the game. So, before, you know, before the Panzer 1C was killed, there were five of them down there. The T-14, the OI Experimental, the Hetzer, the Chihi, and the 1C. And, and again, those two TDs have saved the day for us. Uh, I'm looking uh, for opportunistic shots into the sides of enemy tanks here. I am shooting high explosives still. I sail one over the turret of the T-14. Uh, but now, there we go. There's the OI Experimental. I don't even have to penetrate him. He's on such low hit points. There we go. I uh, feel a little, little dirty doing that, maybe, yeah. <laughs> so now it's just the enemy Hetzer. Uh, he's there against three of our TDs and our artillery, who actually did also change his focus to help defend the cab. Great job by that player in that little Tier 3 German artillery, the Bison. He actually has a very good game. And uh, so the cap's been defended. I, I think about going back to help out with the Hetzer, but you know what? They don't, they don't need my help. They, there's lots of firepower down there. I am worried, though, that our two heavy tanks uh, up in the north are on both very, very low health. Uh, the KV-1S is a one-shot, certainly for the Stug-3 anyway, and the T-14 is a two-shot. So right now it's really just their armor, and I think they're kind of using, there's a bit of a dip in the terrain there, to, they're trying to stay hull down. Uh, I stop here for a sec, I ask our artillery player to focus on the AT-2. That's definitely the toughest nut to crack of all the enemies defending the cap right now. And yeah, they're okay, so the KV-1S is taken out, it's just the T-14 up north. But again, like when I went south, I think the enemy uh, in their cap circle are all fixated on that T-14. They don't know I'm coming up here. They have no eyes on the middle road. I talked about how important that is. And the Panzer 3-4, I think, is trying to flank the T-14 to get around that uh, very thick frontal armor. Uh, and I do manage to put a heat round into him. The uh, Panzer 3-4 doesn't have a lot of armor on his turret, only 30 millimeters. Uh, but the side is uh, 65, which would have been too much for a high explosive round to penetrate. So that's a good example of where to use heat. Uh, again, if you, you don't want to use it on really, really heavily armored targets for the most part if you're just shooting a thick armor because it won't pan and it won't do much damage. But there, I definitely uh, might not have penned HE. And uh, the heat round did go through. I take my time now to aim at the cupola of the AT-2 with a heat round. And uh, yeah, even with 0.41 accuracy, it manages to go through. So there we go, ace tanker and the top gun. Uh, Great little tier 5 battle, and again, this is exactly the kind of battle you want to have that 105 millimeter howitzer in. It's it's just awesome. And uh, we came second for damage. The KV-1S did out damage us by a little bit, uh, and we had 1,030 base experience. Uh, it was kind of too bad. You, you look at the results there, and there's a lot of players on both teams, actually, that didn't do much damage, didn't do any damage in a lot of cases. And and really, that fire for effect ribbon, I've talked about it before, you really want to try to stay alive, even if you're bottom tier, stay alive long enough to do as many points of damage as the hit points of your vehicle, and you really help your team out. And if everybody on your team does that, you know what, you're going to win, because there's only so many hit points to go around. Uh, fired 13 shots, only 9 hit, but they all penned, including those two heat rounds at the end, and uh, I, I actually still managed to make a tiny bit of a profit. So let's move on to our second battle now. We're in a tier 7 battle. This is nowhere near as favorable as the last one. And I've mounted the 76mm for this. I've been bouncing back and forth, trying to get good replays on both. It was certainly a lot easier to get a good replay with the 105, I will say, than with the 76. But uh, you know what? The 76, we talked about aim time. We talked about letting it aim from range. And, and you know, you have to fire, certainly fire some APCR if you're uh, bottom tier like this because uh, the penetration, as we talked about, is not great on the 76mm round. So we're on Arctic region. I decide to go to the south there and take up kind of almost more of a TD roll. You can see we've got a couple of TDs and a medium heading north. Uh, I could easily have gone, uh, gone up there with them and helped defend that northwest corner. But uh, in this case, I figure, you know what, we'll start down here, and if I need to, I can use, okay, the mobility is not great, but it's good enough, I can flex north and, and help defend if the enemy does push there. So first and foremost, no Y Experimental comes around the corner. I know I can pin him, but yeah, I shoot at the hull. Um, the accuracy was not enough for me to hit the turret the first shot, but I do manage to get a second shot into his turret. It's nice and squishy, and, and even with the relatively low pen on the 76 mil gun, I can put one through his turret. Uh, you can see now the... Uh, the uh, heavy tank number six, the Japanese tier six premium tank, shows up. I, I take the OI experimental out with a second shot to his turret. Uh, that uh, yeah, that uh, number six heavy tank there is going to be a bit more of a challenge. We've got a 3001P, the uh, German medium tank, with very good frontal armor down there, and an M4. I decided to go for the M4 first because it's pretty much a guaranteed pen. He backs off, and I do manage to put one through the, the upper glacis of the uh, 3001P there before he pulls back. So. Uh, I'm doing okay here. I'm taking some opportunistic shots. I'm trying to avoid drawing attention. Uh, and then I do pull kind of a tomato move here. I'm thinking about going up and, and going for cover, and I stop in the open. 
And yeah, there's the heavy tank number six. He puts a big meaty shot into me. And I think that was a big derp shell and a high explosive shell from the uh, OI that's now shown up that just missed me there. And, and if that had hit me, that, that would have ended my battle there and then. So not a smart move on my part. I'm very lucky the OI missed me. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to push forward now. Our AT-15A, the... Uh, the British uh, premium tank destroyer is down there all by himself. The 301P is flanking him, and uh, the AT-15A has got great armor and a high rate of fire, but the gun only points forward. It doesn't have a turret. Uh, so that 301P could have flanked him and side-hugged him and picked him apart. So uh, I guess I kind of saved the uh, the AT-15A there. Uh, I did fire APCR, though, because that 301P does have really good armor, and, and if he had turned his front toward me, I might not have penned. Uh, so now, you know what? Hey, the flank of those two enemy heavies up on top there is wide open, and so let's exploit, right? That's what medium tanks are supposed to do, and I've got this great little hill here. I've got awesome gun depression, so let's uh, pop up and see what we can do here. So there's no eye. Oh, and there's an enemy AT-15A uh, with his uh, very strong frontal armor pointed towards our uh, teammates there uh, to my west, but uh, yeah, I've got their back now. So I, I take a bit of a donkey shot, I auto-aim on the OI, and uh, of course uh, he's angled and I hit his hull and it, it bounces. But I've got clean shots on that uh, heavy tank number six, so I put two into him, he's, he's backing up on the ridge there trying to turn around. And now the OI is bearing down on me, so I'm a little worried here. Uh, so I put one shot through his drive wheel and he's turned his back on my allies and, and they finish him off. And I get a very lucky snapshot on the move into the turret of that heavy tank number six. I don't know how that hit, but it managed to, and with APCR it managed to pen. I, I make another little mistake here. I don't think I should have fired at that AT-15A. I think I should have just snuck up on him. I drew his attention. He started to turn. I tried for his track. I did not uh, hit his track and detrack him, but I did damage. And now he's a one-shot. I get up behind him and finish off that uh, very dangerous Tier 7 premium tank destroyer. So you can see things aren't going too bad. Uh, the enemy kind of holds the north there, and uh, we've got a few campers in the back. And I'm not sure what our KV-2 is doing back there, if he was pretending he was artillery and lobbing high explosive up at people, but yeah, I don't know. So uh, SU-85, a great little Russian uh, turret list here, five tank destroyer, uh, sitting there on that little hill there. I take the time to aim. I don't think he notices I'm there, and I don't want to alert him by uh, aiming or shooting before I'm fully aimed because it could bounce off his frontal armor and alert him. It could splash next to him and alert him, and then he turn his frontal armor towards me or get back undercover. Uh, the uh, T-25, the Panzer T, 25 not the Czech one, the German premium uh, medium tank appears for a sec, but I don't get the shots on him. I've got the flank of the enemy VK3002D, the uh, tier 7 German medium tank. Uh, you know, it's got a pretty good gun, uh, but it's also got very bouncy sloped armor, and uh, for me, I'm having trouble penning him, so I switched APCR. I put one into him, and he's driving away. He drives away in a perfectly straight line, so I'm able to get a shot into his rear. Now we've got a Churchill out in the open, uh, very low health, so I finish him off, so there's a lot of kills in really short succession, and, and I was able to, I guess, be lucky and clean up some low-held targets, and I'm on seven kills now. So one more, I can get my eighth kill, I can get that Radley Walters medal, I've never got one in the M4 Sherman, and it would be a, a really nice way to end the battle, especially a Tier 7 uh, in a Tier 5 tank. So now we see the enemy Jagdpanzer has actually come back, and he's just uh, around the other side of this little mound in front of me here. If I can get him, that'll be the Radley Walter. So I, I, I try to push the Sherman as hard as it'll go, but the mobility lets me down. My teammates take him out first, and uh, I don't get that eighth kill. So we've got uh, myself and oh, now two other friendly tanks now pushing up towards the enemy base. That T-67 was last spotted up in the north there, and I think, you know what? Let's get, uh, let's get some friendlies on cap, put some cap pressure on, and maybe we can lure that T-67 back. So I suggest that in chat. My teammates uh, you know, go along with the idea, so they hop on the cap. We've got two on cap now, so they'll, they'll be able to cap out relatively quick. And I set up behind this, uh, this hill here, and uh, I load high explosive because the T-67 does not have a lot of armor and, and a lot of hit points, and, and a high explosive round, even from the 76 mil gun, might have a chance of taking him out. So I'm waiting, and I've got the ambush set up now, and uh, my teammates are on cap. Our KV-2's back there still. Um, I, I guess defending our cap, uh, but there are still two enemy tanks unaccounted for, of course, so we want to uh, watch out for them. They won't have a chance of capping now, of course, because we have two on cap before them, and yeah, there's the T-67 uh, appearing down by our base, and, and uh, he probably wasn't expecting to see that KV-2 there either, and that monstrous uh, derp gun on the KV-2 takes out the T-67. So no point waiting here now. Uh, I'm not going to ask my buddies to get off cap. You know what? There's no point. Uh, you know, we'll let them get the cap points. I'll see if I can find that T-25 and, and get the eighth kill, but uh, time runs out before I have a chance to do that. 
anytime you're bottom tier and you're able to do a moderate amount of damage and get some kills, you're you're almost guaranteed to get some kind of a mastery badge. Uh, and in this case, I was lucky. I got the ace tanker uh, for doing all that damage in a tier seven battle. Uh, Top gun for seven kills. No Bradley Walters, unfortunately. But I got a Levis Lyos medal, and I, I apologize to my dear Finnish listeners uh, for killing two tanks that are two tiers higher than me in a medium tank. And that's one you don't see a lot, uh, but I was certainly very happy to get it. Uh, over 1,500 damage and uh, almost 1,300 base XP. Again, when you're doing damage to tanks that are two tiers higher than you, those experience points rack up pretty quick. And you can see uh, our AT-15A, our T-29, uh, there are other tanks in our team at top tier that really had great battles as well. Hit 21 of my 25 shots, only 16 penned, and, and part of that was my fault, of course. I showed you there a couple of donkey shots where I was auto-aiming on heavies that were angled and had no business penning, and I did lose uh, 12,000 credits, but uh, you know what? I'll, I'll take that result for that ace tanker in the top gun in a tier 7 battle. So that's the M4. Two perfectly valid gun choices. I, I gotta say, though, I, I think I'm pretty much sold on the 105. Uh, I've kept this tank over the years, and, and uh, you know, whenever you're kind of feeling a little down and you're not having good battles at a higher tiers or whatever, take your M4 out with the derp gun on it. You'll have an awesome time and, and have some fun. Uh, is there a tank that you'd like to see a user-friendly video of? Let me know in the comments. Please consider clicking like if you liked what you saw, and maybe click and subscribe. This is Sir Harry. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.